What's going on guys? So today is going to be the first video in a series of multiple videos on how to build a custom frame. I'm going to go over the tools needed, the necessary supplies needed, and walk you step by step through on how I build custom frames. There will be some tools that I'll show you that will make the job easier, but they are not needed. So I'm going to kind of go over it uh, basically through how a starter would do it. Um, this is going to be a few different parts series that I'll be doing. Uh, please comment below if you have any questions. Like and subscribe. Don't forget about that. Share it. Um, hopefully this is going to go over well. I am not a videographer, um, so this should be interesting. But I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, I know I get a lot of questions uh, through Instagram and through other uh, social media platforms on how I do this stuff. So I'm going to share it with you and I hope you enjoy. Thank you. Like, subscribe. Don't forget. All right, guys. So first, basically, I'm going to go through some of your most important tools that you're going to need. All right. Um, on my table here is probably my most used tool next to the welder. That's going to be your grinder. You want to get a decent grinder. Um, super important. Uh, get a cheap one that crap out on you. This is going to do everything you need from cutting the metal to grinding it. You can cope with this. Uh, there's just a variety of things you can do with a grinder. I have two because I don't like changing out wheels but you don't need to. So you're gonna have your cutting disc. Make sure it's a metal cutting disc. You can get these at Harbor Freight. You can get these online. Um, I order them by bulk, so I will put a link below where you can buy these. Um, flat disc. This is gonna grind maybe some of those welds away that don't look so pretty, but they're also gonna clean up your metal. You're going to be able to use these to cope with you're going to be able to use these to line up so that, that you're, you can get your metal perfectly aligned. Uh, and lastly, this is what I start out with. These are basically paint stripper um, flap discs. And I will use these to clean the metal because your metal comes from the metal supply warehouse. We're greased up and dirty and it's so that it stops it from rusting. Well, you got to get that off of there. You don't want to weld that. So I like to clean my metal completely by using these. It's not don't have to because you can use a flap disc in order to clean the areas that you're going to weld but it's a nice touch especially if you want to pop out your powder coater ear protection guys don't forget this stuff's loud ear and eye protection uh, also a must on that all right just an idea of what you start with before like I said they uh, put these this chemical on there and they so that this doesn't rust while it's sitting in the metal manufacturer but you can see what a difference they make okay the next thing is going to be you need a good solid platform to lay your stuff down on if you are laying your metal out on something that is warped your frame's going to be warped it's not going to be straight so this is a nice thick quarter inch piece of metal that I use um, because I put all my bikes head tubes basically in the same spot I was able to weld this part here and that's how I start my frames um, this is basically a jig uh, I, I draw everything out on here that I want to draw out everything is going to be laid here this is where you start your center section um, super important get a good one I used to use wood um, which was fine, but it did warp them and you can run into issues with your frames not wanting to line up All right guys, we're gonna go into the roller bender that I use This is how you're gonna get your curves is with one of these right here. This is a KK aka industries bender roller um, I like this. I love this one uh, It gives you a lot less what we like to call walk in the metal and that's when you're bending it your tube actually wants to start to turn one way or the other. Um, it's relatively easy to use. You want to lube up your dies here. You put the metal in. As you tighten it down, you spin it back and forth, back and forth, and that's where you get your bend. When you're ready to take it out, you loosen the top. 
Now you can get a Harbor Freight style bender, which they work pretty well and there are kits out there to make it even better. Uh, that is what I used when I first started. I just found that if you want to put money into it, if you think this is something that you might want to do uh, as a side business or whatnot, get you a good bender because the rollers in here are, are machined way better. Everything functions way better than you would if you got a Harbor Freight roller. All right, guys, next we're going to go into the welder that I use. I use a Hobart 140. Um, this is a great entry level welder, uh, especially for the beginners. It's super easy to use. There's a chart on the inside here that you can use as a reference to figure out how you want to uh, or what you want to weld and, and what settings you want to use. And they're pretty dead on. Um, this welder is a workhorse. I've used it for years and it just it never lets me down. Um, it uses a regular 110 house plug, so you don't have to worry about wiring any into 20. We don't weld anything higher than, uh, this thing tops out at a quarter inch, and we don't even go that high on bicycle frames, so you're not going to need anything that crazy. Uh, this is a relatively cheap machine. I think it's 100 maybe, maybe like $500 for this machine here. Uh, maybe a little more. Add the cart in there, and then you get your bottle. You may be in this setup for less than $800. All right, so now we're gonna get into the actual jig itself. This is where, where everything really comes together. Once you've built your center section on your jig table, that's when you're gonna bring it over here and try to line everything up. Uh, my ground clearance is pretty much used by this. So you're gonna put your, that's your head tube holder that locks your head tube in frame's going to run through here. You want to lock it in here. And then you've got some other bracketry that you're going to use, which I will show you later to tie your back end to the frame, tie your bottom bracket to the frame. Um, I'll put a link in the description of where you can actually get a full jig. If you want, I did build this one. Uh, some of the parts I sourced from Chop Source. Uh, that's another, that's a company that I will post in the link below where you can actually buy a complete jig and I strongly suggest that you do. I have went with wood before. I have done everything I could to make my own jig not quite as nice as this one and it never turns out well. So the money's worth it right here. So next you need something that's going to help you bend those back legs or chain stays as we call them. Here you go. <laughs> it's relatively crude, um, but this is how I started. I used, this is actually just a, uh, this is a pipe bender. Um, you get these at Lowe's or wherever, and you'll use these to get that mandrel bend so that your legs can turn for the back part. Um, this is a half inch diameter. I use uh, one inch now on my back legs. I suggest either 7 eighths or 1 inch should be what you're looking at using, which we will get to at a later date. All right, so now I think it's time to show you some of the tools that I use that make my life easier. This right here cuts metal like butter. Um, this is a shear. You use this to cut any kind of uh, plating that you want to use. If you have a center tank plate that you'd like to use, uh, you get nice straight cuts. This is different than what's called a Beverly shear, which allows you to do more curved cuts. This is a lot of straight. Um, I use this to um, cover up the holes on the end of my back legs. Uh, it's easy to hurry up and just nip them out, put them where you need them, and then grind the rest off. You can do it by hand with a grinder. Like I said, your grinder is going to be one of your number one tools with your cutoff wheel, um, but they're dangerous cut your hand off. If you could do it real simple and quick with this, that's definitely the way to go. Right, well, some of you have probably seen me use this before, and this is a Woodward Fab uh, mandrel bender. This right here is what's going to give you the same thing that the pipe bender did. It does it here, and it does it a whole lot easier. Um, again, not a cheap tool, but they do pay for themselves. You use a lot less metal when you're using machines like this. It took me years to get one of these. I, I, I had to bite the bullet finally and just do it. Um, but for what it does, it's definitely worth it. 
the most expensive part of this machine would probably be the dies because they don't come with the dies and you're going to need them for whatever material you're going to be using. For me, I use one inch dies here. I use uh, one and a half inch dies for the actual body. All right, guys, without a doubt, this is probably one of my favorite tools. This is a tubing notcher. This is going to allow you to easily and very precisely notch those tubes so that you get what's called a fish mouth. And a fish mouth is basically you're taking that pipe and it's fitting on that other pipe like that and that's you don't have any gap. It makes better for welds. Um, this is a Chicago uh, Industries tubing notcher. Um, they're not cheap, but for what they do, they pay for themselves 100%. You cut your bottom brackets out with this. You cut holes in the frame so that you can actually insert the legs into the frame instead of fish mouth welding them to it. Um, I'm going to go over some of these terms if you don't understand them, but we'll get to it. Um, without a doubt though, I, I didn't use one of these before and trying to fish mouth a tube by hand with your grinder wheel can get a little dangerous, a little sketchy. So having it in here, it's way more precise. Um, you're getting uh, dead on fitment and that's what you want when you're welding. You don't want somebody to ride the frame, ride one of your bikes and have a weld break because you tried to fill the gap. All right, so now I'm gonna go over the materials that I use, the thicknesses and what type. First thing we have is for the center section of my frames, I use a one and a half inch DOM tubing. It is 0 0.065 wall thickness. That's how thick the actual tube itself is. I do that on all my frames unless it's a client that might be a little bit heavier and I need to uh, bulk it up a little bit. But the thicker you go, the heavier it's going to be and the harder it's going to be to bend. These are for the back legs. Um, also, chain stays is what a lot of people call them. Again, this is a one inch tubing, 0 0.065 thickness. I like this, just gives it a beefier look and it's much stronger to use than the 7 eighths that I used to use. This is what's known as a bottom bracket. Uh, you can source these at Chop Shop Customs. Um, I'll put the link in the description, but bottom brackets is where your pedals are gonna go. This holds your, this holds all your uh, pedal assembly. Um, super important part of the bike. Head tubes. Head tubes are also one and a half inch tubing, but the diameter is 0.03 eight three sorry 0 0.083 diameter on these tubings and i make my own head tubes uh, these tend to work perfectly you may need to grind the insides out a little bit but uh, they, they work that's all i've been using um, you can buy them by the stick so and a head tube is is the most important part of the bike that's where everything starts these here are called dropouts. Dropouts meaning this is where you're, this is the end of the bike. This is where your wheels are going to mount. Um, these right here I get cut over at Gearhead Customs. Uh, John cuts these for me. These are all plasma table cut. He does my does my little uh, initials on there so that you know it's mine. Um, I'll put his link in there too. He does an amazing job at doing that. Uh, he also cuts me out coaster brake brackets. I like. All my frames usually have coaster brake brackets unless you're going to be running a, uh, a handbrake. Um, pretty cool, relatively simple little design. You weld these on and you are done. All right, guys, so that's it for this week's episode. Um, I hope you learned a few things. I hope you're going to get some out of what I've, what I've shown you. Um, you really could do this with a grinder, a bender, and a welder. and, and be able to make frames. Uh, these extra tools I'm showing you are just gonna let you be a little bit more creative um, when doing it and help you come out with a better product. Um, please like and subscribe. I am going to go into more, I'm gonna go more in depth in the frame building process so that you can see all of that as well. Um, if you have any questions, please comment below. Uh, you can also go to my Instagram page, Seaburk Customs, um, I do all my stuff there you can see pretty much everything i've ever built on there um, i do also offer shirts hats so hit me up dm me on on instagram there if uh, you want to get some burgundy dice and uh, see you guys next time